Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Brownie here today with another video. Um, today's video, we're gonna talk about recording exhaust sound and video quality of your GoPros and how to get the best out of it. If you see my clip, this is exactly what we're gonna aim for. So let's get into it. All right, so there are a couple of things you're gonna need. So you're gonna need a GoPro camera an audio recorder, and a couple of ND filters. So ND filters are pretty important. A lot of people don't know what they do, what it's for, but I can explain you. So uh, about the video, I will not explain you every single setting, but I will show you every single setting. So I'm not gonna explain you what shutter speed does, but I will tell you what shutter speed to set because it's gonna get really technical. And I want this video to be as friendly as possible. So even if you're someone who don't know much about photography and videography so you can just plug these settings in and get the best out of it really so dive in for the camera i use hero 11 uh, i have an nd filter on if i can get some sort of reflections please there we go so if you see the red thing that's the nd filter so nd filter comes in various numbers so if you see here, it's uh, got a CPL, which I believe stands for clear polarizing filter. Then you got ND8, ND16, and what I use on my Hero 11 is ND32. So now, the higher the number, the more light it's gonna block. So the purpose of ND filter is to shoot at a slower shutter speed during a bright daylight. So you can get that motion blur that you see in my videos on the sides. So the smallest number, ND8, you probably use those in the lower light situations like at night or in the evenings. And then 16 is the midpoint and 32 you use in the bright sunny day. The brand I use for the ND filter is called Telesyn. If you see at the bottom, right there, it's called Telesyn. That's what I use. Um, I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna get the same ones, I don't care. Just get whatever you want um for the gopro i use 11 but i think it should be okay i came from hero 7 and that also supported nd filters i think as long as the nd filter is supported on the gopro you should be able to record good stuff now the way this hooks up is pretty much there's a rubber gasket around the glass itself and it just goes on top of the camera lens it just go plugs on and that is it all right, so for the audio, I use Zoom H2N. Now, I came from Zoom H1N. H1N does also a really good job. This one's just a bit pricier than H1N, so if you can't afford or if you can get Zoom H2N, it's better. Just go straight for this one. Um, you can record multiple channels. You can re uh, record in surround sound. You can record just from the front, just from the back, or sides. You can do various things. Um, so first, I'll go over the camera settings and how I hook up my camera to my helmet for the angle. And then second, we'll go into the audio settings and how I place my microphone to get that exhaust sound. All right, for mounting it on the helmet, I usually um, mount my camera upside down. I don't do the traditional way of having the camera upwards. So if I was to mount this GoPro, it will be mounted more like this upside down on my helmet so the camera angle gets a bit more lower that's what gives you a bit more of like a video game feel the camera angle matters a lot if you don't know much about cinematography um that's okay doesn't matter so the the mount that i have on this one is from aliexpress it's a cheap mount but it's made of a metal it's all cnc and it's amazing the fitting is exactly for my helmet i use shui um i think it's x spirit 3 uh, and the mount is really good it fits well for this one it's just a basic clamp that comes with the gopro that's what i use once i hook up my gopro to my helmet this is what it looks like it's upside down the lens is lower gives you a better angle you can see the handlebars and more of the front view and give you a better perspective as well so this is my helmet setup i don't have a microphone in the helmet because i hate having wires and clutter in my helmet uh, let's get into the gopro settings all right, for the settings, you can just tap your standard and then this tiny edit the pencil and we have the settings. So instead of explaining you the settings here, I'm gonna show you on the phone because we can access exactly same thing on the app. 
So if I go into the video mode and then standard and then tap the tiny pencil, you can edit settings. So I always shoot in 5K, 5.3K. My frames per second is 24. Uh, lens is hyper view, which is the widest view you can get. Um, hyper smooth is on, duration off, schedule capture timer off. Now this is where the colors play an important part. You wanna make sure you're recording in 10 bit and bit rate is higher. The higher the bit rate, the better, and lesser the noises, the better the footage looks. Shutter speed, 148. So basically the rule is if you're shooting 24 frames per second, double the shutter speed. So make it 148, simple. Um, ISO, 100. The lowest the ISO is, the less noise you'll get in your camera. But again, lower ISO is not very good if you wanna shoot in low light. So the max ISO is due is 200 because I don't really shoot in dark situations. So my camera will only produce so much noise because the threshold is between 100 and 200. Now, if you shoot a bit more in the dark lighting situations, you can up this to maybe, you know, I think 800 is pretty good. It's still gonna hold the uh, lighting pretty good. It's not gonna be that noisy. Um, because the cameras are getting better and better, so the sensors are pretty big, you should be okay. So next is white balance. White balance, I do 5500 because I like a bit of warmth tone in my footage. I don't like blues or reds, so I try to shoot a bit more warm tones. Uh, I don't like to have any sharpness on my footage because I'll, I, I feel like when GoPro sharpens the footage, it kind of tends to over sharpen. Usually keep it the lowest I can find. I can't turn it off, so I usually switch to low. Uh, colors are natural. I don't do GoPro vibrant flat anything. Natural is good. You can choose flat if you want to really, you know, learn how to color correction. You can switch flat, but I just keep it natural because I don't have enough time to really dig into it. Raw audio is off because I don't want it to process the audio at all, so I keep it off. Uh, wind noise is off because I don't really use the microphones on the GoPro, I have external microphone. Media mod, it just tells you what kind of microphone I'm using. Are you using the front of the microphone? So if I bring the camera back, media mod is literally telling you to use the front of the mic or the back of the mic to record the video. Um, the rest is okay. Pro tunes, is, these are the Pro Tune settings. So this is done, the main bit. Our next to iffy, this tiny gear icon. Just make sure your video mod is uh, highest quality and camera controls pro. If you have, on your Hero 11, if you have easy on, you can access all the manual settings. So you gotta make sure you have pro mod on, uh, on your camera controls and video mode is the highest quality. All right, time for the audio. All right, so let's talk about the audio. So I use Zoom H2N microphone, as I explained earlier. You can also do the same settings with Zoom H1N if you want a bit cheaper variant. Um, this one can be confusing in a lot of settings, but I'll just give you the basic one that you, if you plug those in, you'll get the exact audio that I get. So fire up, you just hold down for a second and it turns on, see the lights come on. Uh, it says version three, Zoom H2N, handy recorders. So it's just taking access of your HD card. Um, so I use MS Studio, so if you look at the top, there's a tiny pointer, so you can flip this point to any side. It will change the direction of the microphones which are recording, so I usually do an MS, which is the microphone at the back and just a bit more on the side. So the main mic at the back is gonna pick up more of the sound and then side microphone is gonna pick just a little bit. Um, for the gain, I use gain two, if you notice, if I can show you. Now, this will change, of course, you're gonna have to play with the setting because I don't know what your exhaust is and how loud is it. For my Spark exhaust without DB Killer, two is perfect for me. It sounds great, you can hear the audio. Um, I would say, just to be safe, start with one because it's always easier to bring the volume up than to bring the volume down. If there's a clipping going on, you can't really fix it. So, it's just to be safe, uh, record at the lower gain, so like maybe one or something, and then, you know, in the post-production, you can boost up the audio if needed. For the internal setting, if you press the tiny menu button on the side here, it will take you inside the main menu. You can go to recording right here, and then recording format. You want to record in 48 and 16-bit. 
the bottom right here. So if we tap that, choose 48 and 16 bit. So if you switch to 24 bit, it can record better audio, but it's only if you're doing like studio production, you don't really, you're not gonna notice the difference unless you put this into software and then process it. So just shoot in 16 bit, it's enough. It will give you better audio, decent file size as well. This is it, that is all you need to do and you will get the audio, I swear. There's no other settings that I change on this. So now I'll explain to you how you can place your microphone so it picks up the best sound. And I completely forgot, you also need a fanny pack or some people call it bum bag or a waist pouch, whatever you wanna call it. So the one I use is by Lululemon. Uh, it's very sleek and very nice. It's all black and it's very thin as well. So it doesn't take a lot of wind noise because if you've got a bigger fanny pack, it's gonna get hit by the wind. It's gonna actually get recorded into your microphone. So the way you wanna place your microphone in the pouch is that you want to so if this side faces the exhaust if you exhaust on the right side of the bike right so if you exhaust on the right side of the bike let's say your waist is right here so the microphone that you're recording with which is ms on mine so the back's gonna work as a main microphone you're gonna make sure this faces the outside because exhaust is gonna catch Exhaust is gonna make sound on this side and your microphone is gonna pick up sound from this side as well so it's important how you place it on the selection of the microphones, especially for this microphone. Let's say if your exhaust is on this side. So when you put this on your waist, if this microphone is recording with the MS settings, you wanna make sure this is facing this way and this will be on your back. Now, you don't want it to be in the middle of the back, more on the side. I'll probably explain you um, how you can sync up the audio as well. I think it's important we talk about that. So now, when you're recording, both uh, the video and the audio. So let's say if I fire this up, right, and I fire this up, you need to make some sort of cue that you can sync up the audio from the GoPro and from the Zoom together. So what you do is when you start recording, record this, record this, and clap three times. What that does is when you clap three times, it creates peaks in your audio. And I will go into the computer later and I can show you exactly how to hook up those peaks. And the once you hook up those peaks, you can mute the audio from the GoPro and select the microphone as your main audio source. And that will give you the clear crisp audio from the microphone and then better video from the your GoPro. All right guys, so welcome to my desktop. So if you go into Premiere, so I've already copied both the files. So this is Zoom Audio and this is the GoPro Audio. So if I fire up the Zoom. So it's recorded pretty well. Let's see, check out the GoPro footage. It's upside down. My mistake, so we'll fix that. So I'm gonna drag in both the clips into my Premiere and then create a composition. So now to create a sequence, you can literally grab your GoPro footage and drag it and drop it onto this tiny paper or in the timeline. That will automatically match the timeline to your video format. So if you're 24 frames per second you shot at, it's gonna set up your premiere timeline to 24 frames per second. Um, of course, the video is upside down, so we're gonna select the clip and then rotations, I'm gonna do 180 degrees. So it's flipped correctly. So that's it. And then if you, you see the tiny line right here, if you drag it down, and you zoom in, if you do Alt and scroll up, you can zoom in all the way to the left. You see these tiny three clicks right here, these three, one, two, and three. So now same thing, if I grab the go um, the zoom audio, drag into the timeline, it should also have three tiny claps. So these three tiny claps are exactly what I demonstrated just now on my desk when I clap three times, it's the same thing. So you want to align these three peaks with these three peaks. So you know, grab them and bring it just under that peak. So once they're aligned, it means the audio should now sync up from your GoPro and your Zoom recorder. So you can literally mute the GoPro audio and that's all you need to do. Next, you can find, you can see the audio is pretty much on par. Um, if you want your left and right channel to sound identical, you can right click on the Zoom audio, go to audio channels and sync left to right or right to left. So you can sync these two and apply. And once you do okay, notice what happens here. The audio in both the left and the right channel are exactly the same. So now if I go around here 
and this is muted right so play it see if I go a bit further down so you can see the action That's what you get. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is pretty much the end of the tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Drop the support if you think you learned something today. And I'll see you in the next one.